All right, in this video, we're going to learn how to find the average rate of change of a function over a given interval. All right, the main thing that you need to know is that you already know how to do this. This is not new. Rate of change is just another way of saying the slope. Okay, rate of change is just a slope. And we know that uh, when we calculate the slope, um, it's the change in y divided by the change in x. You know, so it's y minus y divided by x minus x. So all we need to know is uh, what are the x's and y's so that we can find the slope. So when they say find the rate of change of some function over an interval, so um, let me zoom in. Um, so this is the interval that they're talking about, and uh, the interval, these are x values, okay? So they're saying, you know, from this x value to this x value. They're giving you two x values. To keep yourself organized, I would recommend make yourself a chart, okay? Just make your, oh man, I hate it when it does that. Get out of there. Um, make yourself an XY chart. Okay, so they gave us these X values. <clears throat> they are 0 and 2. So uh, we just need to find the Y value values that go with them. All right, the Y values that go with them, um, we'll substitute these X values in to find the Y values. Um, for now, let's just go ahead and use our TI30XS multi-view. All right, we've got x squared minus x. Um, so if you hit the table function of the calculator, let's get rid of that one, um, and we can just type in x squared minus x. Okay, um, hit enter. We might as well start at the value we want. So the first value we want is zero. So Let's go ahead and start at zero. Hit enter a few times. Okay, here we are. So zero, if we substitute zero, we get zero for the y value. All right, which is obvious, because if you put in zero here and here, the zero squared and zero, obviously you're gonna get zero. Um, if we substitute in two, and you know, uh, I guess we shouldn't be so lazy. Uh, if we were to plug in two, for these x values, we should be able to do this easily in our heads without a calculator, am I right? Uh, because this would just be 4 minus 2, which would be 2. Um, but also notice on the calculator, there's 2 comma 2. The calculator does it uh, very nicely as well. So um, for an x value of 2, we got a y value of 2. So these are the two points we have, all right? We have 0 comma 0 and 2 comma 2. So the rate of change is just going to be the slope. So um, if I want to find the rate of change, well, I'll go ahead and call it rate of change now. Um, rate of change. But really, I'm just doing the slope. y minus y over x minus x. So first, y minus y, so that will be 2 minus 0 um, over x minus x, so that's also 2 minus 0. I wish I had picked different values, so, um, but um, let's just follow through with this for now. So 2 minus 0 is 2, 2 again, so the rate of change over this interval is 1. Okay, um, it's bothering me that these values are so much the same. Let's look at the next one. Okay, let's find the rate of change of this function over this interval. Okay, um, again, let's make a table of values. All right, so please understand that this interval, they're giving us x values here. These are x values. Okay, so make your table of values. So we have these two x values, 2 and 6. Let's find the y values that go with them. And I'm definitely going to use the calculator. So 
hit your table button, clear this out. So we had 3x, use a little caret here to make the third power. Um, 3x to the third power, and I think we had minus 2x squared plus 6. Double check. 3x to the third power minus 2x squared plus 6. Okay, so there's our function. Um, hit enter. We get to tell it where to start. We want it to start at 2, since that's the first value we need, so might as well type in 2. Hit enter like four times. Okay, so at 2, you have a y value of 22. Okay, how about 6? All right, we could just scroll down. At 6, we have a y value of 582. So 500 and 82. So the rate of change All right, the rate of change is just the slope. Okay? And the slope is y minus y over x minus x. Okay? y minus y over x minus x. So that means we're dealing with y minus y. So 582 minus 22. Okay, y minus y over x minus x. So 6 minus 2. Okay, so this is going to give us our rate of change. Okay, so we just need to calculate this. Okay? And um, we could even put this in the calculator if we wanted to be really lazy about it. Uh, 582 minus 22. So 582 minus 22. Okay, 6 minus 2. All right, obviously we could do these things by hand. But um, I'm just making a point that, uh, boom, the calculator will do it for you should you so desire 140 so in this case the rate of change is 140 alright so that is how you calculate the average rate of change over a given interval it's really just the slope y minus y over x minus x make a table